Hello everyone. I was looking through my scratch profile today and saw a message saying that somebody had put my name in his profile. So I went to check it out. And uh, this is a 10k underscore <laughs> underscore 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 hyphen hyphen hyphen. Um, so thank you very much 10k. Um, I'm glad that you uh, enjoy the videos um, and I'm really uh, fortunate to have you as a fan. Um, and uh, <clears throat> he had asked uh, <clears throat> asked me uh, if I could do a live video, so I thought that I would um, look for a topic to do. I noticed that uh, the Scratch team put out this project here called um, Scratchtober. Oh, hey, how are you doing? Um, put out this project here called... Oh, that's really loud. I need to mute this tab because I can't hear myself. Oh, <laughs> all right, there we go. Um, so, uh, this, uh, Scratchtober project, um, says that they are putting out a list of prompts, and this is like a good way to, to spark creativity in general, is just come up with some random word. Um, another trick that you can do is, is combine two words, and oftentimes they'll kind of be nonsense at first, but, um, you can come up with some interesting ideas that way, so. Like you could think of like spooky bugs or upside down bugs and when you start combining different ideas together they are <laughs> the cat cartoon is definitely inviting he looks so happy um so you combine different words together but but they're they're prompting with bugs and i was uh thinking about what a cool bug project might be so i googled for bug movement um, and the first result that came up was this this paper over here, um, which I didn't read too thoroughly, uh, but just through from looking at it, it didn't look like it was <laughs> saying all that much. Um, although I, I admit that because I didn't read it that thoroughly, I, I may have, might have missed some um, profound idea that was in here. <clears throat> but the the idea in this paper. Uh, was that potentially you might be able to model um, bug movement as a random walk. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second. So uh, a random walk is um, uh, where um, you have some kind of, of object that's moving around and um, you uh, will will cause it to either choose a, a new random direction each time it moves or a new random distance. Uh, so the simplest the simplest way to think of this, and we can actually start playing around with this in here. I'm picking a butterfly because the uh, paper claims, uh, although I feel like it doesn't really really uh, demonstrate it that well, but it claims that because these two graphs are similar that you can um, you know, that cabbage butterflies and uh, I think there's one other one in here. Crawling caterpillars can be seen as uh, moving, moving with a random walk. All right, I'll see you later. Thanks for joining. Um, moving with a moving with a random walk, and uh, the simplest version of this is where you have a uh, object that's moving around and. Uh, you would have it move, and then each time it moves, let's say it moves some random direction, it'd move move some random amount. So oftentimes you would have it. Um, uh, a good way to good way to model this, or a good, a good way to demonstrate this is have it move a uh, random amount in either direction, but have it be symmetrical, so you can kind of see it move. So if we Click start. We can see that's kind of moving around randomly, and maybe it kind of shifts over to the right or to the left, and you don't really know which way it's going to go. So this time it kind of moved to the right first, but you never know. Uh, it it could potentially get a whole bunch of these minus tens in a row, and um, end up moving over to the left. <clears throat> oh, cool! Thanks. I'm glad you like them. I uh, uh, have not made that much progress on them recently, but hopefully they will be able to be tested. 
um, hi, how are you doing? Um, hopefully the bots will be able to be uh, run run a game soon. It'd be kind of fun to play play with people. So this this particular run of the butterfly ended up moving off to the right. But if you start it again, let's actually move back to the beginning. Where's the movement? And we'll say go back to the middle here. <laughs> All right, yeah, class is important. Uh, so this time we ran it again, it started in the middle and it started off moving to the left and um, the thing with random walks is you don't really know because it's it's random. But it kind of looks, already looks kind of like an interesting movement already. Um, but this model in this paper is saying, let's see if I can find it. Uh, this is just something that they made up. It's a sort of a broad, simple model that, you know, like it's not saying not saying that much, but uh, they're saying um, each time, each time the uh, insect moves, um, you have where is it describing the model? Uh, so think about the think about the bug, the insect, as moving in a two-dimensional space. So um, that's perfect for Scratch because this area here is a two-dimensional space, and it will um, you it, you can you can look at the the bug as approximately moving in a bunch of straight line movements one after the other and had a picture of that over here so even though the bug is is moving in this kind of very random curvy uh, direction um, you can think of it as moving as like one straight line and another and another and another and so this model actually um it's really quite well with scratch uh, because uh, you have straight line movements in Scratch, so that's what we're doing here already. And um, the other part of the model that they talked about was to straight lines uh, have a turning angle here. So the idea that they're saying is that maybe you can look at bug movement as where the bug is moving in a straight line and then turning a random angle and then moving another straight line and then turning another random angle, etc. So uh, we can follow this in Scratch. And they have um, uh, this variable here for what angle is going to turn and this length here. And they talk about your probability distributions. And um, in Scratch, the the only random the only random block here is this pick random, which is a uniform distribution. Um, but uh, we can try it out and see if that looks interesting. So to build that, um, you would have to have a turning angle. So we'll say every turn it'll move uh, straight. <clears throat> hey, what's Scratchtober? Um, welcome to the stream. There's this um, uh, project that the Scratch team um, put out. I think this, I assume this is a scratch team. I think I found it somewhere official. Um, where every day in October, or I guess the last 20 days in October, or I don't know, I didn't see how quickly these are going to move, they have a prompt and um, are uh, using this to spark, spark ideas. So today's prompt looks like it's bugs, and I wanted to make this video about bug movement. Um, so to, to implement this model here, where we're moving a straight line and then turning a random angle, uh, the code is super simple. You move a straight line and you turn a random angle. Um, we can still put this random angle here, minus 10 to 10. I did see somewhere else in the paper, it said that uh, they found that the angle for one of the two bugs that they looked at was symmetric here. The function, the probability distribution of the angle was symmetric around zero degrees, so it, it didn't have a bias towards always turning left or always turning right. So that's kind of what we had here, with minus 10 to 10. Um, one thing that's that's useful to do in Scratch, and Scratch allows you to do that <clears throat> is harder in other programming environments, is you can create variables for these and then play with them interactively. So we can create an angle and we'll say that um, the turning amount is going to be from minus angle to angle. Uh, usually for minus I do zero minus, although I don't know if there's like a better way to do that. So zero minus over here, your angle, 
And then uh, if we play with that, what we can do is play around with this more interactively. So change this range to let it turn up to 180 degrees. You can already see that's kind of interesting even without modifying the movement amounts. Uh, and then for the movement, um, these slider bars can't ever go negative, so I think the best way to be able to play around this would be to create a variable that's the minimum move length. Oops. I'm having trouble typing. And then instead of a minimum and a maximum, you would say the minimum and then kind of the size size of range, move range size, or move, maybe move length range. <laughs> turn these into sliders too. Oops. And then <laughs> rather than having uh, this move always be 10 steps, you can pick a random number between um, the minimum move length and the minimum plus the oops the minimum move length plus the range so there's that code uh, and then as we increase the minimum amount the butterfly will fly around more quickly and as we increase the range the the amount that it flies around will be more random and <clears throat> that already looks kind of interesting to my eye. Um, the paper was, uh, if I understood it correctly, making the claim that this model actually is uh, correct, <clears throat> or well, not they're not they're not claiming that's correct, but that it it might be a good way to model the two particular bugs that they looked at because if you um, look at the distance that the bug moved away from its starting point. Um, as uh, as as a function of the, <clears throat> or I guess the, the square distance, as a function of the um, number of times that it's it's you've run this model and moved it and and had it turn once, the actual um, the actual observed behavior, which is this uh, black line here, that's a little bit more random. Um, matches what the random walk model predicts would happen. So, um, oh, speaking of backgrounds, we can make a backdrop so that the uh, screenshot for this or the thumbnail for this project ends up looking more colorful. <laughs> I guess we'd need something where a butterfly would be flying around. Oh, maybe some flowers. <laughs> there we go. It's kind of bright. I wonder if there's a way to fade this out quickly. I uh, don't see anything obvious. So there's our butterfly. Uh, we could potentially make it look more visually interesting by creating copies of it. So rather than having the original butterfly, what we could do is have it clone. Let's see, where's that? So we'll add a forever loop over here. Well, let's hide the original. Um, where is that? I thought it was in purple. There it is. We'll hide the original and have the original butterfly clone itself over and over again. And we don't want that to be too overwhelming. So let's have it also wait a few seconds. Maybe like one to three seconds for every clone. And then when it starts as a clone, then we can have it show itself. And go to, maybe we can start at a random spot. Go to a random position so that says hide, not show. And then show itself and go to go to random position show itself and then do this motion and at the end uh, so that we're not too overwhelmed with butterflies maybe what we can do is have it delete itself 
if it hits the edge. So this will be uh, is a touching block, touching edge block. If touching edge. Um, so instead of forever, we'll say repeat until touching edge. Oops. And then we'll delete the butterfly clone. Let's try that out. All right, the butterfly is a little bit big, so it's hitting the edge kind of quickly. Let's maybe make it smaller. And I'd like to see more. So maybe instead of three seconds, uh, I think the problem is that they're starting close, too close to the edge sometimes. So this random position thing isn't working out that well. Hi there. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. Uh, so let's have it go to the middle, like we had it doing before. And now they look like they're moving really quickly because the move length is very large compared to the size of the butterfly. The butterfly maybe is a little bit too small. Whoa, that's too big. So that looks kind of neat. Uh, I think that they're moving maybe a little bit too slowly for my eye, but you know, this is something you can play with pretty easily. That's one of the things that makes this look cool. Maybe the angle would look better if, if you changed it around some. You can play around with this and see what looks good. That's interesting that one of them is kind of flying off Sometimes they just fly off randomly. I guess we want them to stay on the screen a little bit longer. They'll have to move more slowly. The other thing that we could play with is in looks, there's this, um, what is it called? Is it in looks? Oh, here we go. It's actually in motion for some reason. Uh, there's these different rotation styles, so we can do left, right, and then they'll always be pointing up. Or we can do don't rotate, which I guess in this case, the butterfly is symmetrical, so it doesn't really help. So I think all around probably looks the best. Hi, yeah, welcome. We're um, working on the Scratchtober prompt, which is this project where different of these words will highlight. And I think the idea is that you're supposed to come up with a project based around that word. Uh, one thing that I do think would look better is, let's see, let's change the rotation style back to all around. And then one thing I do think that would look better is in the costume if the butterfly were actually facing forward. Oh, we could rotate it. I can't tell if that's right. Something like that. No, it looks like it's flying forward. Uh, so I think that's, uh, maybe we can also, hmm, I feel like it'd be nice to be able to, uh, change the butterflies so that they're more visible against this background. Maybe a background that's a little bit more pastel, less saturated. Maybe this one. And they're going to be hard to see against those leaves. Plants. This one's kind of dark at least. Oh, it's kind of cool. Do wall one. All right. Where is that? Wall one. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> pretty barren. 
<laughs> but it's red, so it's a contrasting color. So uh, I would I would agree, uh, just sort of in my non-scientific way, that this model does feel like it kind of matches insect movement. Um, it'd be interesting to see. I guess we, what we could do is add other types of bugs, although the whole picture wouldn't look very good. <laughs> yeah, well, one definitely is boring. Maybe we'll switch it back to something else. Uh, I guess for the thumbnail for this project, we should uh, have more butterflies. So we'd like increase this um, number of butterflies that's happening more and more. 0.1 to 0.2. Is that actually taking effect? Oh, there we go. That was odd. I would have thought that that would have taken effect immediately. I'm curious about that. Oh, it did take effect immediately. So why didn't it, it didn't seem to work before? Oh, I guess it did work. All right, so there's a bunch of butterflies and Let's move this over here and then kind of arrange these so they make them some sort of conceptual sense so that you can play with the angle that the butterflies are turning and then um, you can play with how much they're moving and now you can see that they're kind of shooting off into the distance. Interestingly that seems to affect only the new ones which also is surprising to me because that implies that Does that imply that um, these old butterflies somehow have copies of this variable? <clears throat> oh, when we reduce it, they all immediately... Huh, this is actually very interesting to me because uh, from what I've seen before, different sprites don't, oh, right, 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 right. We, we actually did create these variables. That's right, that's right, never mind. We created all these variables um, as local variables for the sprite only, so it makes sense that they all have their own copies. And so only the new ones um, get, uh, only the new ones get the new value as you're adjusting these values. That totally makes sense. So um, there are a few things that uh, if you want to remix this, definitely please do. That'd be really cool. Uh, I'd love to see what you what you do about it. How do you clone variables? Um, so that is here when we created the variable. Oh, we can't actually see that anymore. When you create the variable, you have uh, two choices. Um, you can say for all sprites, which will create a variable that all the sprites will see the same value of, or you could say for this sprite only, um, and then only the one sprite that you're creating the variable in has access to either read the value or to um, write the new value. But um, with for the sprite only, the other thing that happens is when you clone the sprite, each clone gets its own copy of these variables. And um, generally speaking, you when you write code, I mean, not just outside of Scratch, if you keep writing code later on in other languages, you want your variables to have um, as little visibility as possible because it makes your code easier to analyze because um, if you have, um, there's a saying that global variables are the root of all evil. And the reason is because if all your variables are global, and all your code is changing those variables as, as more as you write more and more code, it becomes really impossible to figure out why your variable is changing. It'll just change and you'll have no idea why, why it's changing. So um, when, when I'm making scratch programs, I always click this because uh, it limits the scope of what code that you have to look at to figure out what's happening with the variable. So uh, because these variables are all Local, they're all for the sprite only. Each of these cloned butterflies has its own copy of the variable. Cloud tutorial. Um, yeah, I've been thinking of um, building a little cloud chat uh, sprite that you can put into your backpack. Um, it's against the terms of service to allow anyone to chat anything they want, but um, there's some interesting computer science topics around um, trees 
T R I E. Um, if you have a list of uh, messages pre-populated in a in a scratch list that you can choose from, and you want to auto-select the best one as you're typing, but the UI for that in Scratch is I think going to be a little bit complicated, so I haven't I haven't put that together yet. Um, so I think that's uh, all that I wanted to do with this project. If you want to remix it, please do find better parameters for these move range, move length, angle. Um, one of the ideas that you could try is make the make each of the butterfly clones have its own motion, like its own parameters for how it's moving. That might be kind of cool because they look different. You could try color effects. Actually, that would be pretty easy to add in right now, where you can change color effect by some. Uh, or no, actually you want to set color effect. Set color effect to some random amount, which I think is between 0 and 100. I'm not actually sure. 0, zero and 100. So when you start as a clone, pick some different color. There we go. Um, and uh, Change the color effect, change, you can change the size of each of the butterflies, change its speed randomly, um, have them appear in different places. Um, maybe instead of having them immediately delete when they get to the edge, like, you know, wait to see if they stay at the edge for too many steps in a row, only then do you delete them. I think there's all kinds of fun and interesting things that you could do. Draw better background than this, than wall one. Wall one certainly makes it, uh, I guess now that we have all these different things, maybe one of these other ones will be... Uh, that's still pretty cluttered looking. <laughs> maybe this one, it's a dark background and the butterflies are all light. So um, there's tons of things that you can do. I'd love it if you remix this. Um, leave a comment if you do. I'd love to check out your project. And um, thanks again to 10k... A uh, bunch of underscores and three hyphens um, for mentioning me on your profile. Um, I really appreciate it and am really happy and grateful to have you as a fan. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching and see you next time.